हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand introduction to cellular communication. The key principle of cellular telephone were provided in the year 1947. So, the basic principle or key principle of cellular telephone communication was provided in the year 1947 by the researchers at Bell Telephone Laboratories and other telecom companies throughout the world. So the first basic concept of cellular telephone was introduced in the year 1947 by researchers at Bell Telephone Laboratory and other companies around the world. On April 3, 1973, Martin Cooper, a Motorola researcher, made the first mobile telephone calls from handheld subscriber equipment. So on April 3, 1973, Martin Cooper made the first telephone call using handheld subscriber equipment to dr joel s engel of bell labs so this was the first time any telephone calls were made for cellular communication large geographical area must be covered so for cellular communication large geographical area must be covered so this geographical area is subdivided into small sections which we call that as cells so you need to remember these words so this will be helpful for our discussion for future topics so this large geographical area must be subdivided into small sections which we call that as cells this cellular communication also used the technique of frequency reuse to increase the capacity of wireless communication and mobile telephone so we'll understand what is frequency reuse in our future topics now just remember that this cellular communication uses frequency reuse to increase the capacity of wireless communication and mobile telephone the wireless service provider often starts with a minimal infrastructure and antenna sites so always a wireless service provider will start with a minimal infrastructure with less infrastructure and antenna sites the infrastructure will be expanded with increase in number of users so this infrastructure will be expanded with the increase of number of users of wireless communication and the technology is also improved to increase the facility and service quality so initially the infrastructure will be minimal then the infrastructure is expanded with increase in number of users and technologies is also improved to increase the facility and service to the user there are different generations of wireless cellular communication like first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and fifth generation in first generation only analog voice calls were made so the first generation supports only analog voice calls and it is unable to transmit any data so in first generation we were unable to send the data in second generation digital voice calls were enabled so user can make digital voice calls and also user can send text message or sms in second generation the user can use internet up to less than 0.5 mbps so internet was also introduced in second generation but the speed of internet was very less in third generation high speed wireless connections were introduced here third generation is used for calling video calling as well as playing games in mobile handset so these are the features of third generation the fourth generation was faster than 3g so the next generation is fourth generation which is very much faster than third generation the fourth generation provided upgraded video calling and full hd video games and also the streaming was very much smooth in fourth generation in fifth generation all devices will be able to connect to internet so in fifth generation all the devices will be able to connect to internet and it will provide 50 gb per month data traffic and 20 gbps of data rate which is very much higher compared to any generation it uses 30 gigahertz of available spectrum it provides more connection density which is 10 times more than fourth generation this is about introduction to cellular communication hope you have understood the topic thank you